in today's video. Carpenter ant is the common name for members of the genus Campenotus that excavate nests in wood. Most species in the genus, however, are not true carpenter ants because they can also nest on the soil. Campenotus is an extremely large and complex, globally distributed genus. At present, more than 1000 species, and it could well be the largest ant genus of all. These ants live in a variety of habitats, and the sheer size of the genus make any characterization of their biology challenging. Nests are built in the ground, in rotten branches or twigs, or rarely into living wood, and most species possess a highly journalistic diet. Carpenter ants play a significant role in starting the degradation of tree cellulose. The ants do not consume wood, but use their mandibles to excavate wood and transport the shavings to locations in the nest, where they can be stored, ejected through openings called windows, or packed into underground tunnels. The galleries and passageways are constructed continuously to accommodate the growing colony. Workers of Campanotus are polymorphic and are commonly referred to by names that describe their size or function, such as majors or soldiers, medias and minors. The shape and structure of the head vary depending on the cast and size of the ant. There are 45 subgenera of Campanotus, and let's introduce a few of them. First we have the subgenus Campanotus. The majority of species in this subgenus nest in wood, hence their common name, carpenter ants. The species that cause the most damage to structures belong to this subgenus. And then, subgenus Colobopsis. They nest in hollow twigs, usually with only one entrance. The head of the major worker is shaped to block the nest entrance. Only workers that give the correct tactile signal with their antennae are allowed entry. There are no structural or nuisance pests in this subgenus, and they are called gatekeeper ants. And this brings us to the subgenus to which Campanotus nicoborensis belongs to, which is called Tanai Mirmex. Tanai Mirmex are called slim carpenter ants. They nest in dry, gravelly soil under rocks or in buried wood. The head of miners can be classified under different forms. The alpha form, where the sides of the head are substantially parallel. The beta form, where the sides of the head converge posteriorly from mouth and the gamma form where the sides convergence is more and more pronounced. In the case of Campanotus nicobarensis, they belong to the group 7, the irritants thraso group, where the head of minors are from the alpha form. The description of group 7 is as follows. Medium to small species, dimorphism is well marked but measures neither stocky nor with a massively wide head. Queens can measure from 12 to 15 mm, minor workers vary between 5 to 8 mm, and majors may vary from 8 to 12 mm. Within this species, there is a quite significant color variation. They can have a very dark brown to red brown coloration, with majors having a very noticeable large orange head. Queens may also present different colorations, in darker or lighter tones of red-browns. Although Campanotus species are normally regarded as monogenous, Campanotus nicoborensis can be polygenous at times, with several online references to multiple queen's colonies at the hands of other ant keepers. Their colonies can grow to the thousands, but initially, like all Campanotus species, they will take some time to develop, especially until the th second or third year mark. These ants prefer to forage at night, although they can be found quite active during the day as well. They are shy and not aggressive, but they will be very defensive regarding their territory, where they won't hold back from biting or spraying any intruder with their formic acid. Their nuptial flights occur depending on the region, from April to June. Nicobarensis comes from the word Nicobar, which refers to a group of islands in the Indian Ocean. They can be found in India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, Laos, China and Taiwan. Their climate range varies from a warm temperate to an equatorial climate, 
These are referred to as tropical or subtropical regions. A tropical climate is a climate in which all 12 months have an average temperatures warmer than 18 Celsius, whereas a subtropical climate features average temperatures in the coldest month between 0 and 18 Celsius. They are usually referenced in the ant community for being a tropical carpenter ant species, but they also tolerate lower temperatures. In their natural habitat during the winter months, night temperatures often drop to the 0 to 10 Celsius range. And this brings up questions about their diapause. Unfortunately, we have to introduce some new concepts. And this may be a bit boring, but if you hold on, you may find it interesting when we start drawing some conclusions. The first term I would like to introduce is homodynamic, which is a continuous all-year-round development of the colony without the obligatory periods of dormancy. Homodynamic species often have a certain seasonal structure of the annual cycle on a general background of continuous development. It is well known that typically tropical insects cannot survive for a long time at temperatures well below the optimum and especially below the development threshold. Therefore, it can be argued that the tropical ants in their majority are not adapted to survive during the cold periods of the year. However, some ant species can demonstrate continuous all year round development even in the subtropical environments. And now we move to the second term which is heterodynamic, which is an annual developmental cycle of ant colonies in which a diapause arises naturally. Heterodynamic species have a distinct seasonal structure. The period of the diapause is regularly replaced by the period of development, after which a new period of diapause occurs, and so on. It is characterized by a lack of larval development and of queen of a position, and the presence in the nests of only certain brood categories. And yet another term, quasi-heterodynamic, where tropical species adapted to live in regions with cold winters without forming real diapause. They are characterized by the potential for unlimitedly long development under favorable conditions inherent in homodynamic species. As an example, several scientists have shown that in southern United States, the invasive fire ant species remain essentially homodynamic. Eggs, larvae and pupae of workers are present in their nests all year round. However, the number of brood stages varies considerably during the year, and in winter, it is very small. As the development of brood ceases at temperature below the developmental threshold, and so, the ants spend the winter in a cold coma state suffering from more or less strong mortality, but in general, the colonies overwinter successfully. And so, regarding Campanotus nicobarensis, how would they be classified under these terms? Would they be a homodynamic species? or a heterodynamic species. Now, normally, Campanotus are known to be heterodynamic, and to make things a little bit more complicated, heterodynamic species are also divided in two groups. The exogenous heterodynamic, which is characterized by the possibility of continuous and unlimited development under optimal conditions. The diapause is optional and occurs only when the temperature is lowered. At temperatures above 25 Celsius, they all behave like true homodynamic species. Second group is the endogenous heterodynamic, where the diapause arises due to internal factors, what we call the internal biological clock, and no external conditions can prevent it. I personally believe that Campanotus nicobarensis falls into the heterodynamic category and the exogenous group. Of course, this is simply my assumption, and I hope that you all can ship in with your own experiences and conclusions on this topic down on the comment section. The reason why I think they are heterodynamic and not homodynamic is because under less optimum conditions as they are occurring right now since it's winter, I'm observing my colony with only eggs and larvae, a very indicative sign of a heterodynamic behavior. If they were homodynamic under the same conditions, pupae would be expected probably with smaller numbers, but still visible, as it occurs with fire ants and other truly homodynamic species. Most keepers in our community who keep this ant species as an exotic, mainly in Europe, having been referenced that this species doesn't require diapause and is tropical, immediately assume that the heat met or other temperature control methods are necessary. 
to avoid the ants from dying. In my case, I am keeping my colony without any additional heat and subjected to normal room temperature, varying from 16 to 21 Celsius during this winter time. And they seem to be doing just fine. And mind you, that in the wild further north in Henan or Shandong, temperatures can drop to minus 2 Celsius. Of course, scientific studies are necessary to validate any further conclusion, but I would say that this ant species does not have a diapause under adverse conditions. The debate is now open. This species is probably the most recommended species for those starting to keep tropical or exotic ant species, and now I think we can see why. A very forgiving Campanata species regarding diapause, that are easily kept in captivity, can grow to large sizes, eats almost everything that they are offered, will be active throughout the year and are not too aggressive, which also makes them suitable for any beginning ant keeper. So let me know what you think about this video and the research, and thank you very much for watching and see you on the next week's video. Thank you!